Hey guys, welcome back. Or if it's your first time in my channel, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's going to be a quick video. I'm just going to make a walkthrough uh, project, a very exciting project that I'm working on right now. It's a documentary series about Pantanal. That's an area in Brazil. The documentary is going to uh, be on air in Brazil as well. And uh, this is about this indigenous tribe that lived in a flooded area for more than 5,000 years. And uh, for this shot, what I needed is the moment where the Portuguese arrived into this area, going up river for 1,500 kilometers more than 1,500 kilometers. I, I had like a very tight schedule for this one. Let me put it up. So this is the shot, it's just a 16 seconds. Uh, with three different um, uh, camera angles, same scene, same setup. And um, I have like just like it was crazy. I have two days to put everything together. So I need to work very smart, uh, sometimes very sloppy as well, and, and just focus on the things that I need to focus so I could this, deliver this in time. And that's really important when you have like this real world projects where you have this tight schedule and you can dream of having oh i'd love to have like just three months four months to work in this project it's just so rare that you have this time clients always no we need this for tomorrow for next week and i uh, work in this project by myself uh, all the way through and uh, it's just the moment that the indigenous guy the native arrive and he see the the boat that's the Burgantine is a mix of sail and paddle board but mostly they use the pedals because the river uh, the wind is not like very consistent so yeah nice scene nice project the total will be around 20 uh, shots for this project I worked uh, the majority of them already so just a few missing so let me go and show you how this uh, looks like in Houdini and um, let me bring this so okay this is my Houdini scene and I'm going to just show you a few tricks that I use to accomplish this shot hope you can uh, enjoy uh, a few of them and use in your own projects uh, it's not a full tutorial I'm not going to go in depth of anything just show you a bit of how I did this okay so basic setup as I normally do I break down my terrain in, in different sets. So this first one, if you look here, is a very dense terrain. Uh, we have more resolution into this terrain. And then we have like this big uh, background terrain. And sometimes I have even more terrains in the back. So for this one, this was enough for me. I have just this, the blue part is just the water plane. So let me dive into my foreground terrain. And let me show you what I did. Also, it's not this one, it's this one. So, I start out with this height field, and then I had like this sphere just to create a mask. So, I use a mask by object, and I have this sphere. So, I have like I could just distort this part and then leave this flat so the water would be here. This is the noise, not the center noise. So, I have like just displacing on positive Y and then mask clear the paint for the path I just wanted a path that I imagine that people would walk all the way to the river because you have like a dense forest it would make more sense that you have like this more regular path that you reach the river where you go with your canoes to fish and, and so this path would have a different vegetation maybe would be a bit deeper uh, so just because people are passing there all the time so the erosion would happen uh, differently so I use the mask blur and then I remap so I, I make the, the it shorter using both the remap in the ramp and also in the input minimum and maximum so now if you see it's just a bit lower for this part so that's what I did for this terrain pretty simple I extract this with an output node, just this path, so I have a different scattering and different texture. I did this mass clear, and uh, when I work with the rains, I start with the the default size, is a thousand meters by a thousand meters. So I like to work like that because the noise coming in straight works 
just by default and then the erosion would work uh, very nicely with the default size uh, without a lot of tweaks and then in the end I bring it down to the the scale that makes sense for me so in this this case is a uh, 50 meters, so 0 0.05. The good way of rescaling terrain is using the height field X form. If you put like HF transform, this is the node height field transform, but it's just named as X form. Because this one, when you bring the uniform scale down, uh, you're already bringing all the, the same resolution. So the grid would follow that. So you won't have like a, these big chunks of polygons uh, when you convert this in the end. So yeah, this is what I did. I put down a node that just to put it out. And in this node, that is the one that I'm going to bring it to geometry because before it's just like a, a voxels. And now I need to bring this to geometry. So I bring down the terrain in voxels. It's um, 500 by 500 voxels. And then I use this visualize node. Node. When the, the, the visualize node is one of the tabs in the road node because this terrain was so small, uh, so flat, and it would be covered with vegetation. I didn't need to put erosion, and that's the thing you need to move fast. You have like just these two days, you'd work with that. You can't be very high performatic uh, and very perfectionist. You need to just okay. I don't need the erosion node for this. Let's move fast and that's enough for what we're going to see. So here I converted to my height field. And what I did, I bake point colors. This is really important. What I did with the, the height field visualize is that just create this height ramp. I compute the range and give, gave different colors to the to different heights. So it just gives a good variation on the colors of the terrain. And when you convert these to polygons and you bake the point colors, the, now the polygons, the points, are going to, to get the same colors that you, you put them when they were just voxels. And what I can do with that, if you go to the materials of my terrain, if you put like RS point attribute, it's called particle attribute lookup, but it's this one. Uh, it comes as UV tangents. What I want is the color. So I bring the attribute name, the color name uh, from this. So now here we have the CG uh, float in the points. So that's what I'm bringing here. And I'm using a color mix to mix between my terrain and the color mix. And uh, you can play with the mix amount. So with one texture, you can have all this variation when you, you mix it together with this. So uh, in this case, it's too small. I want to show you, I think you can see it better in the background terrain. So we have like just two, two textures, two materials. I use a Quixel Magiscans for, for those. So it's just like a basic uh, dry moldy ground and a sand. This is the dark soil just for the sand. And this is for the background. So let me... Uh, go to my background and yeah and here you can see what i'm talking about let me render this okay so now you see let me also change this to okay so you can see it better like that so you see now if you put my camera here look the difference uh, if I have like straight my texture straight in to my diffuse color, you have this, you know, like all this styling uh, happening in here. And when you use the point color mixed, you just already get some variance into these patches. And um, I didn't worry too much in this case, like uh, I could mix two or three different textures in here and, and play more with the colors, but this would be just covered with vegetation. So in this particular case, it wasn't ne fully necessary. And uh, for my angle here, uh, it's just like, uh, you wouldn't notice, imagine here full of uh, vegetation. Let me uh, bring back this one so you can see that you can't even see the terrain. So just a bit here in the foreground and um, 
and that's it so yeah here the margins you see a bit but nothing major um, happening there so okay for the background terrain I did something a bit different um, what I did was like that so here's the same thing same uh, size and uh, what I bring to mask by object in here was the original terrain, the, the foreground terrain. So I have like this, and then I bring this to mask. So it's actually, it masks like this, and then I invert the mask, because what I wanted to happen is when I place this noise, uh, I also did like also this mask draw, because I didn't want the background, but with this, even if I disable this, and if I use my noise, I, I, I know that I'm not going to displace my original terrain in here. Anyway, here you can see what happens is that you make sure that the, the foreground terrain, this one won't displace on top of the other one. So that's what's happening in here. So I created this mask, then I mask clear, and then I draw my river. Uh, if you see my other tutorial about the tides, uh, I'm going to link this uh, also in this video. So if you didn't see, it's a more in-depth tutorial with the terrain and I cover uh, more about uh, different ways of creating this river. In this case, I just use like this draw mask and roughly draw where I wanted it to be and the path it would make sense for me. It's not a very procedural way of working, but sometimes it's just uh, the fastest way of working. And uh, then I remap this again and make it just a bit lower. Mask clear, and now it's out to this. So in this case, same thing. I put the visualize node, high field visualize, gave this uh, texture, different colors all the way. I resample it because I thought it was too jagged the edges in here. So I make it like a bit better the resolution. I double it. So in here, resolution scale double. So now it's a thousand by a thousand voxels. Before it was 500 by 500. Then I convert big point colors and materials. So that's all. And the material did the same thing. I, I bring the point color and use the color mix to mix between them. And also I export this map that I wanted this, uh, where I wanted my sand, just the sand bottle and the, the margins. I export using high field output, a 2K in this case, I placed it in the mask and I rearrange, uh, put the auto remap from zero to one and save this in the EXR. And then I use this to, to define which areas I want this material of the sand and which areas I want the other material as the grass to happen. The water, I use just a bump map with, uh, instead of using the displacement. So also very fast. I go more in depth in my other tutorial about the tides. There is something else that I want to show you guys that is it's cool. One thing that when I had this meeting, I told them, yeah, guys, I just can't have this uh, boat be shown very close up camera. I can't show all the details of all the characters in the boat. I don't have enough time for that. We need to uh, at least like one month or two months so I can put a lot of effort into to, to, to make it really real uh, so we can film very close. Uh, render it very close and um, and then I said no I need to use this uh, this backlight is very good to hide details it's always beautiful to have this very sunset or sunrise look and uh, this this backlight it hides a lot and it's very forgiving it's really good to, to work with that if you can't put a lot of details and I said in the, in the this shot that I needed to be more closed up uh, I, I need you to be a bit defocused. So then I knew, okay, they said, okay, that's fine. We just need to see that this big boat is coming up river 
and this guy is watching them, so that's fine. So then, okay, great. Uh, we, I can, um, if I can do that, I just need a fast way to to animate it, and and so I I use the crowd uh, in Houdini to let me show you. I just it's one single agent for all these slaves, and uh, one single agent for the European guys on the top, the Portuguese uh, on top. So uh, if you see, the guys are not even holding the pedals. And they're just having this random movement. I have like, uh, for them I use Mixamo uh, animations, just random guy typing the, in the computer. The other guy is just like gesturing, the heads are going up and down. And sometimes it's, it's just what you need if it's not very on camera. You just, the eyes can pick repetitive movement, like if everybody's doing the same, exactly. You, you can pick even if it's out of focus and uh, you can also pick if no one is moving at all. That's just weird. So you need this organic movement from one character to the other. So if you look to these guys, they're just like doing these different moving, movements. Like this guy is going up, this guy is just looking at this one bending down. And just if you see this guy here, it's this guy there. So uh, it's not a lot of difference. Also for the Portuguese guys uh, here, uh, one guy, this one is pointing down, the other one is going to open his hand, and it's very, very basic in here. But the cool thing is that I use this as this crowd. It's, um, I can't dive in for this one, this lecture is just like a, a walkthrough uh, what I did, but I'm planning to, to go uh, more in depth with characters in the near future. Because I have a very good technique and it's very easy to work, very fast and, and I didn't see people working that way in the internet so far. Uh, I'm not the best with characters, I'm not specialist on that, but I'm good enough for working professionally uh, in some projects uh, with characters and my workflow is really uh, good uh, and I, I, I'm sure there will be a lot of people that would, would use a few tricks uh, in their own workflow because it's just like very very fast and at the same time very broad and you can achieve a lot with that so not for today though uh, so just the small crowd setup but for the pedals here that's the interesting part instead of animating every pedal because what I needed here is this side to be a bit different than the other side and each single one would move just a tiny bit different but at the same time you need this group movement of the pedals to work all together otherwise one pedal would hit the other so they need to move together but they need to move a bit different so and, and there is this specific regular movement for the pedal too that needs to happen so if let me show you just first just the pedals moving if you see they are moving in this rounded way. They're going to the water now, you see? Now in the front, they're in the water. They're going to pedal in the water. Then they're going to go up again, go out of the water and move to the front. And, and that's go on and on and on. And the way I did, I took one of them. First, of course, I placed all of them, all of the pedals. I just placed them on the spot and bring the pivot point exactly to where I need it to be, so in this area. All of them, if you see this one, is in this spot. All of them, the pivot point should be in the same. So then, I just created one formula for one of the pedals using a transform node, and I use the cosine and sine formulas. Uh, if you use them, a cosine in one axis and the sine in the other axis, and you play with these values, that's the frame, uh, multiply in this case and multiply by 2 for both of them and 20 in one side and 60 in another you can just this is not like a, a one formula specific for everything you just need to play with the numbers for your own purpose for your own project with the time and how it makes sense I look some footage of these big boats how long it would take for a full cycle to happen and then for me this was my numbers so, okay, uh, I have this, 
uh, going on for 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 my uh, pedal here and the other ones I make like this uh, channel uh, copy of them but I also put like a plus five in one I think this one maybe is um, this one no anyway I just made a few changes to to them so they doesn't look completely the same so this one is the same formula minus three um, this one is the same in here but maybe here is yeah this one is the same this one minus two so I just give these different uh, movements you see like um, how they are not exactly the same they're just like this irregular shape to them and that's enough um, to to make it like a believable and then I made one side like that and for the other side I used that mirror and a time shift of 15 frames so it's just like 15 frames ahead of the other side and then I put them together in this project so that's it guys for today if you want to see more in depth any of this I know it was really uh, fast on that uh, I'm also uh, I need to deliver two more shots for this project and I'm working on them now and I'm also preparing a full course on terrains I want to create like this uh, very fast focused on terrains in Hojini uh, for like uh, other planets beaches mountains, different type of, of uh, terrains, but to cover different techniques for, for every single uh, tutorial so uh, we can all improve together, I can share a bit of my knowledge uh, and also feel free when you see something that you did different or if you saw different and would be good for me to learn as well. I'm also always open to, to, to improve my skills. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see more tutorials, more content. Some are just like this more superficial walkthrough of my work. Some are more in depth, more like a, a full course. Sometimes I put like down a full tutorial series. Uh, I'm just starting my channel uh, in these last few months, two months, I guess. So uh, I was during these last years, I watched so much good content on YouTube and it just make me more motivated to share a bit of my knowledge as well. I hope you guys like it, so see you in the next one.